This unique viewpoint allows us to read the whole Bible as a single story and to see the unfolding of God's plan in history. And today we are reading Judges chapter 18. The Word of God shall we pray. And this will be a great time for you to pray. Pray like it's communion Sunday morning. Confess all of your sins, your faults, and your failures. Get your heart right with God. And it's unfortunate that I have to say this. And uh, and I know that the sweet evangelical Baptist, Methodist, Pentecostal, Holiness, Charismatic churches and people do not like for me to say stuff like this. Uh, because to them, they, they, they will say that it gives the devil too much credit. Well, uh, God has said a lot about the devil. And, uh, and uh, you better take heed to that and make sure you do what God has told you to do against the devil and to fight against the devil. Because the devil will take a beautiful, sunshiny day and turn it into a tragedy. He specializes in doing that. And if you're not prayerful, sober-minded, vigilant, and watchful, and those of you who are in ministerial, family, organizational authority, if you don't nip it in the bud, uh real quick like uh, you're going to have a serious problem on your hand and oftentimes it is going to grow and fester and get stinky and bad uh, uh, and, and, and get uh, worse and uh, and this is why I love my all of my pastor brethren but uh, uh, one, of the, one of the things that I pray for them about, one of the things that I'm concerned about with them all of the time is that they're very gifted, but they're also very sensitive. And uh, they're very loving, and so therefore they're always, they're also very, um, they don't want any conflict. They don't want any problems, and so they let mess go on for a long period of time and it festers and grows and begins to stink and they don't try to do anything about it oftentimes until it's too late because they do not like confrontation they do not like conflict there are many husbands this way and, that, and I, I, I do my best to try to help them that to understand that conflict is good that confrontation is good you got to do this as a leader uh, so that everybody can be uh, protected and blessed and, and, uh, and, and everybody can be at rest and at peace. You have to do it for the glory of God. God wants you to do it. And that means if you have to put somebody out, you've got to do that so that the whole can be made whole. And see, the people in these leadership roles who want to be loved. That's another thing that pastors, uh, they feed off of people and they they want to be loved and appreciated and they are in most cases. But when it's time to deal with a, a devil in the congregation or in the family or in the organization you, or the ministry, you better deal with it. Okay, and so uh, what I want to say I want to say it to everybody here. Do not let the devil use you to try to hinder God's service and work. I've already confronted somebody this morning. And that is my wife, Marika White. Uh, I've already confronted her and uh, uh, rebuked her. And told her, don't, don't let the devil use you now. Do not let the devil use you to try to hinder God's work and God's services. And uh, thankfully, she went ahead and settled down. 
and started doing what she was supposed to do. And I see some of you don't like that, but that's real Christianity. If I had not rebuked her, uh, we would we would have had a further problem, and I am not going to have a further problem. I have way more important things to deal with and do for the glory of God. I don't have time for uh, penny any mess just because you don't like something. And that goes for everybody here. Uh, check yourself. If you don't check yourself, I will check you. And if you don't take heed to that, God will check you. So go ahead on and do what you know you're supposed to do. Uh, it's called Christian maturity. You don't live by your feelings. You don't live by your emotions. You don't live by uh, having your way or not. And I'm talking to everybody. I'm not mad at anybody. I'm talking to everybody who's listening right now. Uh, for your own good and your own family. That's why you all come and you listen. We have, uh, with the help of my youngest son, Daniel Ezekiel White, we have, on days like today, four to five services. Some of them are pre pre-recorded. Some are live. Uh, every day we got uh, uh, seven days a week. You're going to have at least uh, five different podcasts, at least that. And uh, then the days that I go live, we can, we can have anywhere from six to seven things going on. And uh, in in in. Uh, you would think that by all of this praying, praying without ceasing, reading the Word of God. And by the way, some of you are not praying without ceasing. Could that be the problem in your life? Why you you're constantly causing a problem and 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 being a problem and and having to be rebuked. And chastised. Look back on your life. In fact your recent life. And and recall how that when you prayed without ceasing. Things went smoother and better. Even though the devil hates it. God will protect you. And God will tell you what to say and do. When you pray without ceasing. Just check back. In your, in your recent life if you have prayed at all if you prayed without ceasing your day went better it's tough it's not always easy to pray without ceasing but if you do that and you read the word of God and you obey the word of God it works better for you just think about that think back on your past month and on the days that you pray without ceasing like God told you to do and things went better. You were able to control yourself. Uh, and you were able to depend upon the Holy Spirit to work in you to control you and to restrain you from the normal evil you do against God and against Jesus trying to hinder his work and his ministry. And so I would encourage you to start praying without ceasing right now. Pray throughout this service. Pray that the word of God will go forth. That the gospel will go forth. That others would get saved. And that everything will go smoothly, decently, and in order. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, shall we pray? And everybody, when you pray, don't listen to other people pray. You pray yourself. It may be weak. It may be feeble. Sometimes it may be a few words, but you pray yourself. God help me. God save me. I'm not sure that I'm saved. God, 
uh, rebuke and bind the devil from my mind, from my heart. Just short, powerful prayers like that will get the job done <clears throat> with God. Let's pray together. Holy Father God, <clears throat> we are weak and feeble. And so, Holy Father God, you want us to be strong in the Lord and in the power of your might. Lord, help us to do that and to be that way. Holy Father God, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallowed be your name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And Holy Father God, I praise you and I thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy. And Lord, I praise you and I thank you for your love, grace, and mercy, even shown through your rebuke and chastisement and wrath because of the foolishness and sin in the lives of your people. Lord, I believe that overall today in today's church, we're worse than the Israelites were back in old times. <clears throat> holy Father God, I praise you and I thank you for your Holy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ who suffered, bled, and died on the cross, was buried and rose on the third day. By your power for our sins, he is the Passover lamb of God who uh, shed his blood on the cross for our sins uh, and who has taken away the sin of the world. And so, Lord God in heaven, we have a whole lot to be thankful for this morning and to praise you for. And we praise you and we thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit and your Holy Word. Grant us your energy, your strength, your unction, your anointing, and the power of your Holy Spirit to preach your Holy Word, to read your Holy Word, to apply your holy word to our lives and to obey your holy word. For Lord Jesus Christ, you said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Uh, Lord, help everybody, help, have that to sink in, into everybody here today and everybody who is here uh, online uh, around the world. Everybody on de uh, who takes it on demand. And Holy Father God, I praise you and I thank you for salvation and spiritual, family and life, financial and material, protection and uh, provision, mental and physical blessings that you have bestowed upon us down through the years, allowing us to be here today. And Lord, I praise you and I thank you for all of the millions, many and manifold blessings. Uh, Lord, that you have bestowed upon us. I have to include the many because I got that from my, my people, my ancestors. That's how they used to say it, Lord. And Lord, you led me to say millions of blessings because you have shown me that you do millions of things in our lives simultaneously to allow us to live and to move and to have our being and to hear the gospel and to be saved. Millions of things, Lord, you do behind the scenes that we take for granted and we shouldn't. And Holy Father God, Lord, help the saved people here and the saved people out there to truly confess their sins, their failures and faults. For Jesus Christ's sake, have continued mercy and grace upon each and every one of us. And please forgive us, Lord, of our sins, our faults, and our failures. Wash and cleanse our hearts and minds and 
consciences in the precious blood of Christ and make us to be whiter than snow. Lord, where we have sinned against you in any way, in word, thought, or deed, for Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive us. If we have grieved your Holy Spirit, grieved and quenched your Holy Spirit in any way, for Jesus Christ's sake, please forgive us of our sins, our faults, and our failures. Wash and cleanse us in the precious blood of Christ. And Lord God in heaven, we pray this morning that you deliver us from temptation, evil and sin this morning, uh, early afternoon and throughout to, uh, this evening and throughout this day. Grant us, Lord, your grace and the power of your Holy Spirit to love right, live right, think right, and do right, and do that which is pleasing in your sight and loving in the right way. <clears throat> Understanding that love must be tough sometimes. Uh, Lord, in our families, in our churches, in our ministries, Lord, love must be tough. And love must be durable. And uh, love must uh, uh, endure hardness as a good soldier. And go through periods in dealing with people who are demon-possessed, demon-controlled, demon-influenced, who hate you, who are religious but lost. Uh, they got slipped a mickey, and uh, they have never truly been born again, never saved. That's the only, that's the only reason uh, why they act the way they act. They do not have... Uh, you working and living in their lives as they should. Uh, or at least you're not in control of their lives. They have knocked you off the throne of their hearts. Whatever the case, Lord, the Christian life, in the words of Ian Major, is no easy road, contrary to the lying preachers who have told the world and Christians otherwise. And, uh, and sometimes you have to go through long periods of dealing with thorns in the flesh and people who say they're saved but they're not. False brethren and false sistren. The sweet evangelical charismatic Baptist world, Methodist world does not like to hear that. But that is the reality. They've turned into hypocrites and Pharisees and Sadducees. They know what is right. Their doctrine is orthodox, uh, but they have become hypocrites, phonies, and fakes, and they would rather exercise being hypocrites, phonies, and fakes, and not deal with the issues, cover up stuff, hide stuff, which you are revealing through this plague pandemic, instead of being what they should be and doing what they should do and telling the truth and shaming the devil and exposing the evil in their lives and in their families' lives. Lord, I believe that's what <clears throat> needs to be, uh, that's, that's basically what this officer in the Marines uh, did this past week. Lord, as you know, he risked his um, career, risked his pension, risked the uh, well-being of his family by standing up and telling the truth to the world that our leadership is corrupt and they have caused this. We should not have a patriotic moment right now, a moment of silence for the people who died. They should have never died. And they died not because of the Taliban or ISIS-K. They died because of proud, rebellious, foolish leadership. <clears throat> and that's what needs to be done in the church, what this man did in the Marines. Stop the lying. We need to stop the lying, the covering up, the hiding, acting like we have a Brady Bunch family in the public and nothing but hell at home 
to the point of people not even communicating, not even doing what they're supposed to do together at home and uh, owning massage parlors so that you can, the, the great minister can get his sexual satisfaction from uh, some women who are not his wife. And on and on, this hypocrisy, this ungodliness that you are exposing has been going on for years in evangelical, Baptist, Pentecostal, holiness circles. And people are mad. These so-called Christians are mad that their time is up. They're mad that they're being exposed. They're mad that it is over right now through this plague pandemic and they're trying their best to wait it out and hoping that it would go away and do not want to accept the fact that it is against them. They want to try to blame somebody else. They want to blame the politicians. They want to blame the white people. They want to blame the black people. But it is the church. The church is the problem. And nobody wants to blow the whistle like this brave Lieutenant Colonel Marine. There are people who are comfortable walking in their lies, their dishonesty, their deceit, their hypocrisy, their phony marriages, phony families, made up families, just to have the right appearance. Uh, where pastors and pastors' wives are divorced and remarried and and because of that, now they're engaging in uh, swinging with the devilish world and have justified it by saying he'll help keep our marriage together because we really can't stand each other. And so, Holy Father God, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you would cast out the devil and the demons of hell. <clears throat> <clears throat> and the spirit of Antichrist in the hearts and minds of and lives of people here and out there cast out the satanic demonic spirit of Judas, Jezebel, Sanballat, and Tobias out of the hearts and minds and souls and spirits of the people here and out there. And Lord, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that you would cast out the demonic sins. The main thing you have a problem with. <clears throat> the sins of pride and stubbornness and rebelliousness. Hatred. Bad attitudes. Bad spirits. The sins of instead of repenting and doing right. And because people do not want to do right. They will attack your prophet attack your servant and try to uh, stop him from preaching what you want him to preach. And uh, the sin of sabotage and betrayal, the sins of sabotage and betrayal, the sins of hindrance and distraction. Uh, Lord, I know that this sweet evangelical community which is unchristian and hypocritical, and some of it is anti-Christ, does not want to hear this. The established religion, the established churches don't want to hear this. The church, which once stood for you, has fallen away. They don't want to hear that either. And so, Lord, I pray that you would drive the demons of hell out of their hearts and minds, souls, spirits, and uh, help them, Lord, to confess their sins for their own good and to repent. Help us all to humble ourselves and pray and to seek your face and to turn from our wicked ways and to repent and to get back to you, our first love. And, uh, Holy Father God, I do pray that you would rebuke and bind the devil and the demons of hell and the satanic demonic spirit of 
Judas and Jezebel, Lord, from uh, and, and, and Sanballat and Tobias from this place, from the minds and hearts and lives of the people here and out there, so that they can hear your holy word and have a heart to want to do it. And Lord, I pray that once again, as you did on yesterday, and I must pause and thank you under constant satanic attack on yesterday. Lord, you gave us one of the most powerful services uh, that we have ever had. And I give you the glory and the praise and the honor for what you did on yesterday evening. Thank you for the great turnout on all four services on yesterday. And uh, I just marvel at what you do with your holy word being preached. Your servant Paul, inspired by your Holy Spirit, called it the foolishness of preaching. And this is why so many preachers now today don't do it. Because they are caught up in the world and want to do things the way the world does. When we all need to get back to the simple preaching of your Holy Gospel and your Holy Word. And Holy Father God, I do pray for thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. And Lord, uh, I do pray for the salvation of the lost, for the revival of the saved, for the healing of the sick, for the comfort of the grieving and for their salvation in our families, in our churches, in our communities, in this country, and around the globe. And Holy Father God, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray uh, that my wife, Marika White, who has tried to hinder me in preaching the gospel and preaching your holy word for 33 years of our marriage. Lord, I pray that she would permanently cease trying to do so. She has never succeeded. And uh, you have shown me that because I never hearkened to her voice and I never allowed her to hinder me from serving you and from preaching your holy gospel uh, that you have blessed my life tremendously as she has even admitted herself. <clears throat> she has said herself she marvels. She's amazed at how you have used me. And maybe she should be amazed because she tried to hinder me. But Lord, I pray that uh, if she is not saved, I pray, Lord, that she would humble herself off of her Jamaican pride and admit that to you and truly believe in you, Lord Jesus. Save her soul and change her life. And uh, fill her with yourself, fill her with your Holy Spirit, uh, for this has been going on long enough. Yes, she has gotten better, uh, but there's still something. It's kind of like a, a thing with us physically. We may see a little healing of a sore, but there's still a kernel down in there. There's still something down in there that has not been taken out, a root of bitterness that needs to be excised, and something needs to uh, uh, so that complete healing can take place. And Holy Father God, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that permanently and forever you would cast out the devil and the demons of hell that have worked in her life. And Lord, I pray that you would save her soul. And uh, I pray that that evidence 
of the fruit of the Spirit would come forth in our life, growth and maturity, and so forth for her own good. Because of this issue, whatever the issue is, uh, not being saved or demon possession or whatever, uh, she has not been a good woman, she has not been a good wife, she has not been a good mother all of these years, not as she should be. And I believe that through you, she can be. And uh, I pray <clears throat> that my all of my children would not allow her to influence them to be the way that she's been. And I do pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, as she knows, none of this would have to be public like this if she would cease doing it completely, 100%. Uh, you have, uh, as she knows, she has a husband that does nothing uh, uh, but uh, stand for you, preach the gospel, preach your holy word, pray, pray with her, and all of these years. And, uh, and at the same time, and do everything else that needs to be done. And, uh, and at the same time, uh, will not allow her to hinder your gospel and your holy word. And, uh, and not hinder her children. And so I thank you for leading me to deal with her and to deal with this situation. Uh, that, and I'm not the only one. And that's part of the reason why you've given me the liberty to pray about this publicly and to preach about it publicly and because so many other husbands have to deal with this but because of the false preaching of evangelical preachers the false writing of evangelical preachers uh, and everybody wants to act like this is not an issue and this is not a problem and that if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. And that's a lie out of hell. That's not how it's supposed to be. And so, uh, Lord, I thank you for leading me to burst that little uh, sore. To get the pus out of it in the Christian church. And to remind men, based upon uh, your holy word, what they ought to be and how they ought to be and who they are. Help them to understand that they may not feel like a person who is in authority. But it doesn't matter how they feel. You have put them in authority according to your word. And they have to assume in their minds that they are in authority. Uh, I'm, I know that many sheriffs and deputy sheriffs and police officers do not feel like they're in authority. They got all kinds of issues going on in their own lives. But when they put on that badge and go out into the public, they are in authority. They have to assume that they're in authority. They have to act like they're in authority. So, Lord, help husbands to do that and put a stop to the evil going on in their households, their con the, the confusion, uh, children going in the wrong direction because wives are going in the wrong direction and causing the children to go in the wrong direction and keeping up mess with the children like she's a child. I help men to put their foot down and cut all of that foolishness out. Otherwise, we'll never see revival and the normalcy that they want, uh, which was not normal, uh, according to your holy word. Uh, they'll never see any sense of, or feel any sense of normalcy again. And so, Holy Father God, I pray, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, 
that you would deliver each and every one of us in our family, collectively and individually, and in all other <clears throat> families that name the name of Christ. Uh, Lord, uh, help us all to and, and deliver each and every one of us, Lord, from distress and afflictions, cares and worries and anxieties, troubles, problems, and fears in our hearts and minds, souls, and spirits. And Holy Father God, I pray that you would deliver us all from tribulations and troubles and trials and temptations and tests and tensions. And Lord, if we do right by you and with your help and by your grace, deliver us all, Lord, from spiritual, mental, uh, physical, emotional, family, uh, financial, uh, student loan issues and troubles, student progress problems. We thank you, Lord, for the president, I think, doing away with $50 million uh, dollars worth of student loan debt. Thank you, Lord, for one Christian school wiping out all indebtedness of every, all of the students, I think, up in Oklahoma. And so, Lord, thank you for hearing and answering our prayers regarding that. And we pray now, today, that you deliver uh, millions of people from housing crisis, food crisis, utilities crisis, evictions and so forth and provide for everybody Lord as you uh, always do uh, a place to stay and food to eat and utilities to use in this modern world and uh, Lord we pray for the salvation of the people help them to turn their hearts towards you Lord uh, use this trouble in their lives and help them to um, understand that uh, this trouble is designed for them to change, uh, to trust in Christ, to repent of their sins, to go in a new direction. In the words of uh, T.D. Jakes, give them the courage to change course because you're very interested in us changing course, repenting, not just praying, not just apologizing, not just confessing, but changing course. Uh, Lord, uh, I pray that you'll help all of your people to do that. Those that need to be saved, help them to get saved and to do that as well. We pray now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Glorify your holy name. Lift up your holy son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Place upon us the whole arm of God. Surround us with the band of your holy angels and a wall of your holy fire. Cover us and cleanse us through the blood of Christ and make us, Lord, to be whiter than snow on the inside. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, Brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. I have the high honor and the distinct privilege and the great pleasure to read in your hearing, thus saith the Lord, the Word of God, the Holy Bible. Today at Judges chapter 18.
In those days there was no king in Israel, and in those days the tribe of the Danites sought them an inheritance to dwell in. For unto that day all their inheritance had not fallen unto them. Among the tribes of Israel, and the children of Dan sent of their family five men from their coasts, men of valor, from Zorah and from Eshtol, to spy out the land and to search it. And they said unto them, Go search the land, who when they came to Mount Ephraim, to the house of Micah, they lodged there. When they were by the house of Micah, they knew the voice of the young man, the Levite. And they turned in thither and said unto him, Who brought thee hither? And what makest thou? in this place, and what hast thou here? And he said unto them, Thus and thus uh, dealeth Micah with me, and hath hired me, and I am his priest. And they said unto him, Ask a counsel, we pray thee, of God that we may know whether our way which we go shall be prosperous. And the priest said unto them, Go in peace, before the Lord is your way wherein ye go. Then the five men departed and came to Laish and saw the people that were therein how they dwelt callous after the manner of the Zidonians, quiet and secure, and there was no magistrate in the land that might put them to shame in anything. And they were far from the Zidonians and had no business with any man. And they came unto their brethren to Zorah and Eshtol, and their brethren said unto them, What say ye? And they said, Arise, that we may go up against them, for we have seen the land, and behold, it is very good. And are ye still? Be not slothful to go and to enter to possess the land. When ye go, ye shall come unto a people secure and to a large land, for God hath given it unto your hands, a place where there is no want of anything that is in the earth. And there went from thence of the family of the Danites out of Zorah and out of Eshtol six hundred men appointed with weapons of war. And they went up and pitched in kajath Jerem in Judah. Wherefore they called that place Mahan Adon unto this day. Behold, it is behind Kajath Jerem. And they passed thence unto Mount Ephraim and came unto the house of Micah. Then answered the five men that went to spy out the country of Laish and said unto their brethren, Do ye know that there is in these houses an ephod, 
and teraphim, and a graven image, and a molten image. Now, therefore, consider what ye have, ye have to do. And they turned thitherward, and came to the house of the young man, the Levite, even unto the house of Micah, and saluted him. And the six hundred men appointed with their weapons of war, which were of the children of Dan, stood by the entering of the gate. And the five men that went to spy out the land went up, came in thither, and took the graven image, image, and the ephod, and the teraphim, and the molten image. And the priest stood in the entering of the gate with the six hundred men that were appointed with the weapons of war. And these went into Micah's house and fetched the carved image, the ephod, and the teraphim, and the molten image. Then said the priest unto them, What do ye? And they said unto him, Hold thy peace, lay thine hand upon thy mouth, and go with us, and be to us a father and a priest. Is it better for thee to be a priest unto the house of the one man, or that thou be a priest unto a tribe and a family in Israel? And the priest's heart was glad, and he took the ephod and the teraphim and the graven image and went in the midst of the people. So they turned and departed and put the little ones and the cattle and the carriage before them. And when they were a good way from the house of Micah, the men that were in the houses near to Micah's house were gathered together and overtook the children of Dan. And they cried unto the children of Dan and they turned their faces and said unto Micah, What aileth thee that thou cometh with such a company? And he said, Ye have taken away my gods which I made, and the priest, and ye are gone away. And what have I more? And what is this that ye say unto me? What aileth thee? And the children of Dan said unto him, Let not thy voice be heard among us, lest angry fellows run upon thee, and thou lose thy life with the lives of thy household. And the children of Dan went their way, and when Micah saw that they were too strong for him, he turned and went back unto his house. And they took the things which Micah had made, and the priest which he had, and came unto Laish, unto a people that were at quiet and secure. And they smote them with the edge of the sword, and burnt the city with fire. And there was no deliverer, because it was far from Zidon, and they had no business with any man, and it was in the valley that lieth by Betharahab, and they built a city and dwelt therein. And they called the name of the city Dan, after the name of Dan their father, who was born unto Israel. Howbeit the name of the city was Laish at the first. And the children of Dan set up the graven image, and Jonathan the son of Gershom, the son of Manasseh, he and his sons were priests to the tribe of Dan until the day of the captivity 
of the land. And they set them up Micah's graven image, which he made all of the time that the house of God was in Shiloh. Shall we pray? Holy Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord, help the people under the sound of my voice. Those who have already forsaken you, help them to, and who were saved, help them to confess their sins, repent, and recommit their lives to you. Those who have never been saved, may have been slipped to Mickey, and uh, have been religious but lost, and they know they're lost. They're lost. Lord, open their blinded eyes and stop their deaf ears and save their souls. And Lord, we pray those who have been faithful to you by your grace, your faithful remnant, your 7,000, help us never to leave you or forsake you because you have never left us or forsaken us. And then, Lord, help us to love and cherish your holy word, teach it to others in a discipleship way, and preach your holy gospel from it. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Right down the third segment. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, family, friends, and foes, and even foes in the family, and to the standing between the living and the dead service family members. This is Daniel White the Third, President of Gospel Light Society International, with the White House Family Devotional Reading of Charles Haddon Spurgeon's magnificent work, The Treasury of David. This is episode number 53. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, we're at Psalm 7, 7. Let's pray. Holy Father God, we praise you and we thank you for your holy word. We do praise you and we thank you for men that you have raised up with unique gifts and talents from you uh, to do as this man has done, Charles Haddon Spurgeon. What a blessing he's been to the church when he was living, and he being dead yet speaketh, and is a tremendous blessing to the church today. And uh, thank you for giving us the insight and the wisdom to go back in time and to appreciate what you have done with your servants in the past, and that with some of them that you have blessed with your anointing and unction, uh, they speak to our day, and they speak to us today. 
We thank you for that. Help us to take heed to your holy word as it is expounded by your choice servant, Charles Haddon Spurgeon, uh, in this devotional time. And help us to remember it and give you all of the glory, the praise, and the hour, and the, uh, all, of, all of the glory, praise, and honor. And Lord, for Jesus Christ's sake, have mercy and grace upon us, and please forgive us of our sins our failures and our faults and cleanse us from all iniquity so that we can be fit for your use crucify our flesh and the old man within us afresh and anew and fill everybody who's saved with the fullness and the power of your Holy Spirit to hear and to understand your Holy Word and to apply it to our lives. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Psalm 7-7, seven, seven, So shall the congregation of the people compass thee about for their sakes. Therefore return thou on high. So shall the congregation of the people compass thee about thy saints shall crowd to thy tribunal with their complaints or shall surround it with their solemn homage for their sakes therefore return thou on high as when a judge travels at the assizes all men take their cases to his court that they may be heard so will the righteous gather to their Lord hear the forties rather here he fortifies himself in prayer by pleading that if the Lord will mount the throne of judgment multitudes of the Saints would be blessed as well as himself if I be too base to be remembered yet for their sakes for the love thou bearest to thy chosen people come forth from thy secret pavilion and sit in the gate dispensing justice among the people when my suit includes the desires of all the righteous it shall surely speed for shall not God avenge his own elect let's pray Holy Father God we praise you and we thank you for your holy word and I pray Lord that you will help us to uh, hide it in our hearts help us to remember it help us to meditate on it help us to apply it to our lives and to share it with others and to proclaim your holy gospel from it in jesus christ's name we pray and for his sake amen ladies and gentlemen in keeping with the spirit of the standing between the living and the dead service we have chosen by your grace by God's grace uh, to uh, continue to read what I call the family verses the family verses that's what I call it that's what I have dubbed it the family verses Ephesians 5 and Ephesians 6 where God has chosen to speak directly to his people uh, who are Christians in the family and directly to each person in the family husband wife father mother and children 
Today we happen to be in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 33. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. In this particular verse, God speaks to both the husband and the wife. And the truth of the matter is, as I've said many times before, I'll say again, if everybody does what they're supposed to do in the family, the family would be just fine. Every day, all day. The problem in the American family and most families around the world uh, is not incompatibility, irreconcilable differences. The problem in the family today is people in the family not obeying what God has told them to do particularly and collectively. That's the problem. If every husband would do what God has told him to do, every wife would do what God has told her to do, every child would do what God told them to do, the family would be a beautiful place and beautiful and wonderful and happy home. Obedience, in the words of Ann Thompson, is the key. Uh, but what we have today in most homes, somebody is not obeying God. Oftentimes, several people in the family are not choosing to obey God. And they're trying to bend things to be what they want them to be. So basically, they're playing God. And God is not going to let you play him. In any way, shape, form, or fashion, most people want to be little gods where they control everything. And God's not going to let you do that. He, he's, our, he's God, and he's already established how he wants things to be. In this verse, husbands should love their wives. Verse 33. Nevertheless, let every one of you, in particular, husbands, God is talking to you. God is talking to me. So love his wife even as himself. The problem uh, with uh, the family today is that these sweet evangelical preachers have twisted this verse to make it say that Love, the husband loving the wife, is to let her have her way. Let her do whatever she wants to do. Let her say whatever she wants to say. For after all, we're, we live in America. Free speech. People are free to do what they want. And uh, she's free to leave as well. If she's not going to do it God's way in my house, she can leave. For as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Now, that, see, see, here's some of you right now mad because uh, you think that's not love. No, it is love. If you don't want to obey God's word in my house, if you don't want to therefore obey me and submit to me, and reverence me and respect me and you want to blow and roll your eyes and by and by doing so trying to belittle your husband and rebel and blow and roll your eyes and talk back and talk under your breath and cuss under your breath and uh, uh, curse your husband under your breath and uh, say I hate you under your breath and all that kind of stuff uh, is you you're free to leave and doing it in front of your children.
you're free to leave. Because the Bible says here, the wife, see that. Make it a point that she reverence her husband. And see, uh, pastors don't want to deal with that because they don't have that going on in their own home. It's always the husband's fault. Always the man's fault. No, as I have told you, when the wife comes, and normally it is the wife, because she does not mind trying to put down her husband in front of other people. When she comes for counseling, the husband would rather her not to do that. But it's another point of irreverence towards him, disrespect of him. And, and so when she comes for counseling, crying and, her, and lying and, and trying to put everything on the husband, the first thing you need to ask her, you're not going to do it, you... Uh, counseling pastors and counselors. Are you are you in obedience to your husband? Are you in subjection to your husband? Are you respecting your husband? That's three questions. She, and she if she's honest, she's going to say no, no, and no. Okay, well that's your problem. That's the problem in your family. That's the problem in your marriage. You are in rebellion against God and your husband. You don't respect God, Jesus, or your husband. And you do it in front of the children, and that's why they don't respect you. That's why they despise you. That's why they don't listen to you. That's why you go crying to your husband, I don't want her to see her and my daughter that way. Well, your daughter is you because you taught her to be that way. And you're also teaching her uh, by your behavior how to get her head knocked off with the young men that she might marry one day. Because the young men out here today, they don't have what your father may have had or your grandfather or even your husband has. And you're training her to get her head knocked off by disrespectfully rolling your eyes, blowing like you're so tired of him, uh, nasty attitude, bad attitude, won't do what you know you should do from the Bible and from common sense to take care of your husband and take care of your children, and you rebel and you don't you rebel against what you know on purpose to provoke a problem to try to prove a point to try to be the head over him to try to instead of reverence him and lift him up high to try to belittle him down low and there is a demonic spirit in many women today their aim is to cut men down that's what the devil wants. Wants to cut your husband down to size so you can rule over him. You want him to hearken to you and not God. In fact, you get angry that he chooses to hearken to God over you. I believe that's the main thing my wife, Marika White, has been angry about for years. I have listened to God over her every time. And that's why God has blessed me in spite of her. And she could have been blessed too if she had been the helpmeet that God wanted her to be. See, this goes contrary to the sweet little evangelical preachers of the day. They have lied, they have preached and lied to the church, to men and women. Men, you, God will speak through your wife to you. Men, you must get your messages from God. I mean, from, uh, uh, this is what they have preached. I preach, they need to get their messages from God, and they need to get, uh, what they're supposed to get directly from God. But they preach, these sweet little evangelical preachers, over the past 40, 50 years, 
Listen to what your wife says. When we're in trouble because our father, our first father, Adam, that's how he got into trouble, hearkening to the voice of his wife. And how, and, and, and how do men do that? How does that happen? I believe it uh, happened uh, with Adam this way. See, you need to understand something. The most beautiful creature on God's green earth is the woman. See, even women recognize that women are beautiful. They are pretty. And not in a wrong way. Men don't go around him. Oh, you look so pretty. No, no, no. We don't do that. Yeah, I, I, no, no man looks good to me. No, none. Zero. Zippo. I had never said that. But women will around. Oh, girl, you look so pretty. Oh, yes. And they do. The most beautiful creature on earth is the woman. What happens is... God gives a man a woman, and he is, now let me just tell you, this, this is a young man out there. Some of you young people know him. Now, I don't know if he wrote this song, but he sung it. A young man. <coughs> and I think he's the second musician who got it right. All these songs about I love you, and I love you, and love is this. And love, and love, and love, and love, and love, and love, and Now, I hate to say the first, first one, he was, he was messed up regarding his sexuality. Got in trouble for it as well. George Michaels. George Michael. And he came out way back with a song about, uh, I, want your, I want your body. He, he, didn't want, he, didn't want, he didn't want the person. You know, he came out with it straight up. I want your body. That's what he, that's the, I, can't, I can't remember the song. I want your body. I don't want, I, he basically said, I don't want you, I want your body. I can't think of the song right now, but you remember, some of you people, you know, you're singing it right now in your mind. But there's another young man who came out recently. I, I never heard the song. I was flipping through the channels and, Caught one of the late night shows. He was on the, one of the late night shows. And he just came out and straight up and said, I love your body. I'm in love with your body. Uh -huh. Somebody's trying to grin here. They, they heard the song themselves. Uh, I'm in love with your body. He flat sung it. He was singing it. I don't know if he's the originator of it or the writer of it or not. But he came out with what is the truth for most men. They don't love the woman. They love her body. And after you get married to them, that's, that's what it becomes. It's, you don't really love the person. You don't love all of the package. You just love the packaging. Why is that? Because he... Uh, there are some women who are just flat beautiful. And, and, and beauty is in the eye of the beholder. So all women are beautiful to somebody, to some man. The most beautiful creature on earth is the woman. And so the man gets caught up in her beauty. So much so in, in her body. Even after a while, he finds out about her faults and her sins and her conniving and her lying and her uh, manipulation. And, and, but he still loves her body. He's still crazy about her body and what her body can do for him. He can, he can get with that. He loves that. And listen, let me tell you, what, and what her body can do for him, he will... He he would rather he would go go to hell for some some men. They love what that body can do for them so much that they will hock into that woman's voice. 
over God's voice. This happens all the time, and this is why uh, uh, America is in the mess it is in, the world is in the mess it is in, because men have hawking not only Adam, don't blame just Adam, blame yourself. You know what's right, you know what you ought to be doing, you know she's wrong, you know she is ruining the family, but you won't put your foot down and step up for God and do what God wants you to do. Check her. And do not listen, hearken to the voice of your wife over me. Now, can your wife help you with the color of the drapes? Sure. Can she help you put up the drapes? Yes. Can she uh, help you with um, making sure that meal is perfect? Yes. Uh huh. Can she help you by rubbing your feet? Yes. But when it comes down to God's word against her, you go with God, sir. See, and this is where men get messed up because they love that body. Uh, they, 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 and see, and where, where men get messed up with this, and, and, and it's been the case down through the years. They, they, and they, they, some die and go to the grave without figuring this out. Here's, here's the question that's always in their minds. While she is disrespecting him and got a nasty attitude and her neck is going side to side, east to west, and only a woman's neck can do that when she's talking back. Now, most of you are not married to a Jamaican woman like me. And when she really gets hot and really gets mad, she begins to talk in part while you don't understand what, she, what she's saying, but it's not good. And the head is going from side to side. Potwise, the language is a language, a broken language, English language down in Jamaica. And, and but here's what men have, many men have gone to the grave not understanding. Here's the question in their minds. How can something so beautiful, so glorious, and while he's even watching her sinning against him and disrespecting him, He's saying, oh, she's just so beautiful, so pretty. How can something so beautiful and so pretty, so glorious, be so evil, so corrupt, so mean, so disrespectful? See, and that's, that's how women control men. And they'll go to the grave not knowing, not understanding that a woman, just because she's pretty, does not mean she's uh, good. And, and she, she, she needs for you to help her to be good. See, God wants you to help her to be a good woman, a truthful woman, a godly woman, a loving woman, a respectful woman, a virtuous woman. And so, husband, your job is cut out for you. And loving your wife is not only buying her flowers. Loving your wife is not only taking her out on a date, or buying her some nice clothes, or giving her some money to go shopping. Loving your wife is checking your wife when your wife is wrong and she's causing confusion and problems in your home that you're going to give an account for. And always keeping up some mess with the children. Let me tell you something, husband. These wives, these mothers who are always keeping up some mess with their daughters, always getting their daughters angry and, and upset and, 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 and keeping an you know, uh, uh, uproar going on, with their children, they are very immature women, and you better check that. If almost every time she says something to them, there's, there's a big problem, and they mad at each other, all day, you check that mess, man. Stop it in your house. Protect your children from that witch. That's what I, I said it, and I mean it. She's a witch who causes constant problems with her children, provoking them, not doing what she is supposed to do knowing she ought to do certain things for them and she doesn't do it man 
It's your job to protect your children. Well, that's their, their, her business. That's her domain. That's not her domain. That's your domain. And you're going to see that uh, when you come back for the next service, uh, two services from now. That's your domain. God is speaking to you. You're the head of not only the, the wife, but the children, too. And it, listen to me, husband. I mean, I mean this now. If you don't do anything else, however your family is set up, you protect your children from, yes, pretty but wicked, evil wife who likes to keep a mess, especially with her teenage daughters, and, and, and then trying to drag you in it when it's, it's out of control. No, don't, don't let it get out of control. Uh-uh. No. Mm-mm. And don't let them, don't let the children manipulate you and play the, the mother against you and all that kind of foolishness. Stop all of that and have peace in your life and in your mind and in your heart. And, and don't let them push you into a so-called man's cave. God never told you to go to a cave. He said you can go to the roof if you need to or into the wilderness, but not into a cave. You stay in there and you find out what's going on and you deal with it if you want to have a home where you want to go to and stay. See, and so uh, that's love, too, is what I'm trying to get across to you. Dr. Dobson called it tough love. I only use the word rough love because Dr. Tom, uh, Dr. Dobson had already taken the word tough. I didn't want to take that from him. He did a good job. He helped many people to understand that love must be tough. If you raised some good children, it was a tough, rough road. Yes, unless there's generations of godly Christian parenting and family stuff going on for years. My generation, my, I'm the first of my family generation who raised my children according to the word of God and not to the, according to the traditions of the world. And praise be to God, my children who are grown and on their own have turned out well. I hope the four that are left behind would turn out as well as they have. They've turned out so well. They've shown me so much love and respect that my daughter just sent me another $500 a few days ago. My son Daniel sends me money every month, and, and, and both of them send me money every month. They've sent me money every month since they've been gone. My daughter Danae, uh, Danita as well. And when I call my daughter Danita, she calls me. The first thing she says, I love you, Papa. Hello, Papa, I love you. Uh, and just like she did when she was a little girl. When we depart from praying together and talking together on the phone, I love you, Papa. Bye, Papa, I love you. These are the children who honored me with the book of all the letters they wrote me when I was... Uh, uh, raising them up and I would give them a whipping and they wrote me letters and thanked me for the whipping when they had pure hearts When they get old <laughs> When they get old and no, no, thank yous. They mad be mad for days sometimes But they'll thank me later on when they leave and realize that uh, It was all important and worth it And if I had not raised my children the way I did, even when sometimes they didn't like it and they didn't uh, agree with it, they would not have honored me the way they have. I, I, and I don't know of any parents who have been more honored by their old, oldest children who have already left the house than I have. I, I just don't know of any. I hope, I hope you have had that experience. And I still have four more to leave the house. And I believe they're going to do the same thing. And uh, truthfully, I know you don't like to hear sweet evangelicals. Uh, truthfully, 
Yes, I do believe that children ought to honor their father and their mother. But they have not done so that much with their mother because she did not rise to the occasion. And in those letters, they would write me and tell me on their own, from their own pure, innocent hearts, Papa, you're the father and the mother in this household. And I, ha I don't have a motherly bone in my body. And they found that out when they became teenagers. I don't have a motherly bone in my body. I don't have, I don't have, I don't have a female side. As some of you effeminate men talking about, I don't know what you're talking about. I never heard of that before. You need to tap into your female side. I don't have a female side to tap into. I'm all men. And I love women. Don't, don't, don't misunderstand me. I love, I love women. I, have, I don't have any problem with women. Because whoever, whatever woman I'm going to, whatever woman I'm going to get with, I'm going to be in charge of the situation. Whatever the case, I don't have. I I love women. They don't bother me. I'm not intimidated by women, and women know I'm not intimidated by them. Those who are rebellious and who want to be feminists, we just don't get together. We, we just don't, we're not going to like each other. It's not going to work. But anyway, folks, I want the best for you and your family. And husbands, you're going to have to show true love to your wife. The kind of love, you say, well, where, what do you mean true love? I thought buying, a, buying some flowers and rushing to the grocery store to buy some flowers for her and, uh, you know, take her out on a date, man, that, that'll let me, that'll help me make a home run with her and, and you know, and all this, say nice words and everything. everything. She'll love you more eventually if you tell her the truth about herself. I was watching something the other day. And uh, the woman's boyfriend said, my soul, you stink. And she just broke down <laughs> laughing. She didn't cry because she, she knew. You need, he wanted to you need to take a shower. You stink. And she just laughed. See, some of you men would never say that to your wife or to a woman or girlfriend. And if you would be man enough to do it, they'll, 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 they'll laugh and chuckle and go ahead and go and take the shower. See? Why? Because they appreciate the fact that you're telling them the truth and you're not just lying to them to get something. See? I got on the case of one of my, uh, uh, my third oldest daughter uh, one day. And got I got on a case about something, and 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 you know she tried to be tough and everything, and she broke down uh, chuckling because she knew she, I was right. See, and uh, and there you know people you got women who will resist and fight and 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 buck up and all of that. You, you as a man you 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 got to recognize your authority. And you need to go ahead and tell your wife, your girlfriend, uh, and the women in your life the truth. And, and, and walk in your authority. One time I loved my mother, but one time my mother uh, tried to get in between. In fact, I wouldn't be married to my wife at all, if it were, uh, for my mother. Even when... Uh, uh, we had a problem one time. She she wanted me to divorce her and marry somebody else. And uh, but uh, I had already made my decision. And uh, and I believe things would have been worse than what they have been because she would have been involved with it by connecting with one of her girls. But anyway, one time uh, she tried to, she asked me, well, is your wife in the room? I need to tell you about something. I said, Mom, I love you and, and, and everything. 
And I said it respectfully. But anything you need to tell me, you can tell my wife. We're one. And I, I've never had a problem with my mother on that since then. Just be man enough to tell the truth. Even when you become a grown man to your own mother. But do it uh, respectfully. Tell the truth to your wife. Do it lovingly. And tell her it's for her own good. Don't get wrapped around uh, the finger of your daughters. Tell them the truth about themselves. And because my, my wife did not step up on certain things, I've had to tell my daughter, y'all need to take a shower. You need, to, you need to take better care of yourself. Now, that's, that's the wife's domain right there. But if she's not going to rise up and do her job, I will say what I need to say. If I smell funk around me in my house, I'm going to, I'm going to I'm boys or girls, I'm going to tell them. You need to take a shower and, and get it done quickly. And uh, if you don't have any clean clothes, you need to wash your clothes. In the long run, people will respect you more and uh, love you more and stay with you. If I had not been that way with my wife, she wouldn't be here today. That's a fact. And so I want to encourage you men to love your wives the way God loves you. How does he love you, sir? You tell me. Does he let you have your way? No. If you're truly born again, you can't even get a, you can't even get away with an evil thought. You can't even get away with looking at some light pornography. He's going to be all over you if you're saved and you're born again. You can't get away with saying something uh, evil to your wife. He's going to convict you about it. Even before you say it. And then if you say it, he's going to definitely be all over you until you deal with it. Confess it as sin and repent. But that's, but that's love too. That's God loving you. That's God loving you. When he won't let you get away with your evil. And yes, that's God loving you when he blesses you with a boat, blesses you with a new car, blesses you with a house, blesses you with some new golf clubs. That's God blessing you too. And he'll keep on doing that as long as you uh, accept his love by rebuking you for your evil. For hating your wife, for running away from the house. Uh, because you can't stand being around your wife and children and, and the chaos that you have allowed. Yeah, that, that's, that's God loving you too. And so with that, ladies and gentlemen, in keeping with the spirit of the standing between the living and the dead, service let's pray for others holy father god grant us your grace your energy your strength your unction your anointing and the power of your holy spirit to pray for others we pray lord now once again for the salvation of the lost for the revival of the saved. Lord, help them to hear the gospel today and get saved. Uh, Lord, for the healing of the sick, for the comfort of the grieving and mourning of millions of people who, who are suffering today because of the death of some loved one who has died from the coronavirus plague pandemic. They're piling up bodies in the state of Texas in multiple cities in refrigerated trucks. Morgues are filling up. People are dying so fast. 
People are getting sick. I see you bitch. Uh, can't be found in many places. So, Holy Father God, we pray that you would comfort these people and draw them to yourself for salvation. And we pray, Lord, for this to happen in all of our families, churches, communities, this country and around the globe. We pray for the people who are right now suffering uh, from the pressure of the tornado hitting that area again. And Holy Father God, the families that are suffering today from their young men and young women who have died unnecessarily in Afghanistan. And Lord, I've never seen the bodies brought back this quickly. But they, from what I understand, have already been flown back to the country. Some who are unrecognizable. The parents have been notified and they're in great grief and great pain. Comfort them as only you can. And Lord, we pray that this would happen uh, in all of these areas. And Lord God in heaven, we pray for all people who name the name of Christ, who say that they're saved. Lord, help us all to confess our sins and repent of not obeying the great commandment or the great commission. And then, Lord, I pray you would grant us your grace and strength and the power of your Holy Spirit to love all people and to witness to all people by any means necessary. And then, Lord, I do pray for all people who name the name of Christ. Help us to humble ourselves. Help us to pray. Help us to seek your face. And help us to turn from our wicked ways. And repent. And get right with you and get back to you our first love. And Holy Father God, I pray. In the holy name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray for all people who are in the ministry of government from the president on down across our country and around the globe. We pray for their salvation. Have your Holy Ghost and not give them rest until they hear the gospel and obey it and get saved. We pray that you would fill them with your Holy Spirit and cast out the devils and the demons of hell that drive them. That we may lead peaceful and quiet lives, that they may walk according to your word and reverse those things, Lord, that are doing great damage to us right now. and to repent so that we can lead peaceful and quiet lives all around the world. We pray, Lord, for the peace of Jerusalem, the great and holy and wonderful city. So much so, Lord, that even the liberal CNN recognizes that and have done a decent job showing respect and honor to your city the everlasting city, Jerusalem, the holy city. And we give you the glory, praise, and honor for that wonderful city. We all have been hearing about it for years. And we thank you for all that has taken place there down through the years as far as uh, our salvation uh, is what I'm referring to, Lord. Thank you for... Jesus Christ coming, your Holy Son who suffered, bled, and died on the cross for our sins, was buried and rose from the dead by your power. 
Help everybody under the sound of my voice, live and on demand, to come to know your Savior today. And Holy Father God, I do pray, Lord, for all of the people who, all of the Christians who are being persecuted all around the world, Lord, we pray that you will comfort them and protect them, provide for them and deliver them, give them your grace in their trying hours and even in their dying hours if necessary. And Holy Father God, we pray now for all of the people who are mourning and grieving, draw them to yourself for salvation. And we pray for a few, by, uh, a few uh, families by name, that you would comfort them and strengthen them and save them. We pray for the family and friends of Illinois singer Eric Wagner. We pray for the family and friends of Texas National Guardsman Regis Madzudzo. We pray for the family and friends of Kansas resident Rob Van Pelt. We pray for the family and friends of Missouri resident David Ousley. We pray for the family and friends of Florida resident Ronald Stedman. And Lord, now we pray for all of the prayer requests, the thousands of prayer requests that have come in and the people who sent them. Hear and answer their prayers, even to this day. Hear and answer our prayers for them. Thank you, Lord, so much for allowing us the privilege to pray for them and to pray with them, all of them, by name, multiple times. And now, Holy Father God, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for a few by name and their prayer requests. We pray for Lozen, strengthen her spiritually, emotionally, and physically. Give her more faith in you and help her to feel your presence and love in your life, deliver her from all spiritual satanic attacks. Do the same for all of us. Deliver her from people who are harassing her and using her. Bring her family back together. We pray, Lord, for John Baptiste in New Jersey, for his wife, Natasha, and his daughter to have good relationships with you. Please bring them together. Help them to resist the temptation and pray more. Uh, we pray for Hajinda in India. Please heal him of depression and uh, uh, phobia. Bless him and his brother Manjit. Heal Manjit of negative thoughts and deliver him from negative thoughts. We pray, Holy Father God, also for the people who have believed in you through the preaching of the gospel, through this ministry all around the world. And we pray, Lord, for a few by name, help them to grow in the faith and help the others to grow in the faith and to stand strong in the faith as well. We pray for Bola, Godfrey, Felix, Rihanna, Siriano. And Lord, we pray for the people who have recommitted their lives to Christ. We pray for Julie, Donatus, Subda, Bobby, and Damie. We commit these souls into your hands. Let your will be done in their lives and in ours. And uh, Lord, we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, help them to stand strong in the faith and be the Christians that you want them to be. Now, and we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and for his sake. Amen. And now, ladies and gentlemen, if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior. You need to get to know him, and I believe in a hurry. Today is the day of salvation. Uh, I know that there are many people trying to get you vaccinated, and that's a good thing. But I want to get you saved from that awful place called hell 
and this is the most important thing. So, dear friend, if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, here is how you can be saved from hell and the power and the punishment and the pain of sin and go to heaven when you die. First, accept the fact that you are a sinner and that you have broken God's law. The Holy Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all have broken uh, the Ten Commandments of God. You say, well, preacher, not me. Yes, you have. Have you ever told a lie? Have you ever stolen anything, including quarters and dimes from your father or your mother's coin jar? Or from their pocket? Or you bought something from the store when you went in there to get something for the family and nobody else got it but you? Have you ever... lusted after anything or anybody you committed the sin of covetousness coveting what other people have one of the reasons why it is a sin against God is because God has the power to give you what you desire and want and need you don't need anybody else's you have committed the sin. Have you committed the sin of dishonoring and disobeying your parents? Have you ever committed the sin of dishonoring God by taking his holy name in vain? By putting your hand on the Bible, for example, in court, lifting your right hand up, and saying that, and swearing that you're going to tell the truth, using God's name, and you uh, told lies. Second, dear friend, accept the fact that there is a penalty for sin. The Bible states in Romans 6:23, "For the wages of sin is death." We die because of sin. Our bodies go to a grave. Our soul goes to hell. If we do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ in this life and repent of our sins. My friends, I hate to tell you this. I have some bad news for you. It's going to end badly for you. You say, what is that preacher? Your life? Death is bad by itself. And listen, don't be ashamed that death is frightening. Death is frightening. <laughs> don't and don't 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 fool yourself. Death itself is frightening because you don't know what that is about. You've never died before. You were born, but you've never died before. I would encourage you to believe what the Bible says about death. After death, the judgment. That's what the Bible says. It is appointed unto men to die. And after death, the judgment. You can act ugly all you want to throughout your life. You can hate God and hate Jesus and hate the church and hate God's people and hate everybody who gives you a gospel pamphlet or tries to witness to you all you want is going to end badly for you, my friend. Number one, you will die. And then after that, the judgment. But make no mistake, until the judgment, you will go straight to hell. There's no other place for you to go. There's no holding place. There's no holding room. There's no purgatory. There's no uh, vestibule. There's no limbo. Is heaven or hell, my dear friend, is going to end badly. And then if you don't get saved, it's going to end worse than that. You're going to hell immediately. 
<clears throat> oh, you say, well, preacher, I've never heard it like that before. Now, now you have heard it. You need to do something about it. Thirdly, understand that you need to accept the fact that you are on the road to hell. Jesus Christ said in Matthew 18, 8, Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life halt or maimed rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. Now these are the words of Jesus Christ. Save people and lost people who don't even know Christ do not believe that Jesus Christ would lie and they don't believe that Jesus Christ plays. You understand me? I said save people, people who are Christians and people who are not Christians. No, they don't see Jesus as a man who plays around uh, with words like this and they don't see Jesus as a man who will lie. Jesus Christ, even though there are many people who hate him, he's the most respected man in the history of the world. So hell is a very real place. Why? Because Jesus Christ said so. He is God in the flesh. Hell is a very real place. Hell is a sad place. Hell is a bad place. Hell is bad news. But I do have some good news for you. Jesus Christ said in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Just believe in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ the Son of God, and if he's the Son of God, he is God. Jesus Christ suffered, bled, and died on the cross for your sins, was buried and rose from the dead by the power of God for you so that you can live forever with him. Jesus died for our sins, suffered, bled, and died for our sins. John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God who hath taken away, taken, taken away the sin of the world. He took away your sins by taking your place. He is your substitute. He took upon himself your sins and was crucified. He died the day God died for you. Jesus Christ is God in the flesh. That's how much God loved you. That's how much God loves you. And all you have to do is to believe in him. Believe in Jesus Christ. And believe in what he did for you. He suffered, bled, and died on the cross for your sins. He paid your sin debt. He was buried because he truly died. Three days later, he rose from the dead by the power of God. You say, preacher, I don't understand that. You may not understand it all, but believe it all. That's what faith is about. Believe it all. Pray and ask him to come into your heart, into your spirit, and to save your soul today. And he will do so. Romans says further, Romans 10, 9 and 13, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou you shall be saved. 
For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Saved from what? Saved from the power of your sin that controls you. Saved from the power of the devil. Saved from hell itself. And saved to heaven to be with God in Jesus Christ. In peace and joy forever. You want peace? You want joy? You want true happiness that will never end? A forever day where it never gets dark? A life of joy, a life of good fellowship, a mansion. You, you've been fighting to get a mansion down here. God, is, God has a mansion in heaven for you. Streets of gold, not asphalt. Streets of gold. Gold so pure. Gold like you've never seen it before. Gold so pure you can see through it. Streets of gold. Transparent glass. In the new Jerusalem. Joy and peace forevermore where the wicked will cease from troubling. And the weary will be at rest forever. You want rest and relaxation? Then you need to get saved. And believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou you shall be saved so right now dear friend believe in your heart that Jesus Christ suffered bled and died on the cross for your sins was buried and rose on the third day and let's pray the sinners prayer let's call on his name according to uh, Romans uh, 10 13 for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Follow me in prayer. Repeat after me phrase by phrase and mean it from your heart. Holy Father God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I admit that I am a sinner. For I have seen today how that I have broken your Ten Commandments and how that I am guilty before you. I deserve to go to hell for Jesus Christ's sake. Please have mercy and grace upon my soul and please forgive me of all of my sins as I now believe with all of my heart in your Holy Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who is sitting at your right hand. Lord Jesus Christ, please come into my heart and into my spirit and save my soul today. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and help me to repent of all of my sins. Help me to turn from all of my evil ways. Help me to follow you, Lord Jesus Christ, in the newness of life. For it is in your name I do pray. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, if you believed in your heart that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, was buried and rose on the third day by the power of God, allow me to say to you congratulations on doing the most important thing in life, and that is believing in the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior that he suffered, bled, and died on the cross for your sins, was buried, and rose on the third day. For more information to help you grow in your newfound faith in Christ, please go to gospellightsociety.com and read my book titled 
free of charge, titled, What to Do After You Enter Through the Door. Jesus Christ said in John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Dear friend, if you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today, please email us and let us know at dw3 at gospellightsociety.com. Uh, we have some free material that we want to send you to help you to grow in the faith and be the Christian that God wants you to be. If you have a prayer request, please email that to us as well, and we will pray for you until you tell us to stop. Until next time, my beloved, God loves you, we love you, and may God bless you real good is my prayer. Uh, within the next hour, if the Lord should tarry his coming and uh, we live, I'll be preaching and teaching again. And so I invite your friends uh, invite people who you know are not saved and, uh, and to our friends in the underground church in China who listen and participate. Invite as many unsaved people as you can. Same thing in Kenya. Same thing in Iran. Same thing in Great Britain. Same thing in the Philippines and all around the world. Invite as many people as you can who don't know Christ. And I will share with them and preach to them the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to take a short break. Let's all stand for our closing prayer. Holy Father God in heaven, I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I praise you and I thank you, Lord, for what you have done and for what you are doing, and for what you will do, my faith looks up to you. Thank you, Lord, so much for leading me to deal with the devil, trying to hinder your work. Thank you, Lord, so much for uh, giving me the discernment to deal with it, to anticipate it, and to never... Uh, allow it to hinder your gospel from being preached and your work from going on. And Lord, I praise you and thank you for this time together. And I pray that uh, lost souls would be saved, uh, Christians would be revived, your holy name would be glorified, and Jesus Christ exalted. Now, Holy Father God, Prepare me and prepare everybody else, Lord, in every way, Lord, for the next service. Lord, grant us spiritual, mental, and physical energy. Demonstrate the power, the unction, and the anointing of your Holy Spirit. Save those who are lost. Revive those who are saved. In Jesus Christ's name I do pray. And for his sake, amen. God bless you, dear friends, until next time. And next time we'll be uh, in a short time today. God bless you. Lord willing, we see you then. Jesus.